For some, it's breaking free from chains. Others need to crush the boxes so that they can become all God's called them to be. In the end, the goal is the same for all of us. Freedom in Christ. Freedom to flourish in forgiveness and to start anew. Local motivational speaker Elena Rarig is taking that very message as far as she can. Dancy talks with Elena to find out what it really means to be a box crusher. Well, I am thrilled to have our next guest join us, it's Elena Rarig. And Elena is an author as well as a life coach. And um, you also have a new business, is that correct, called Box Crushers LLC. You got it. All yes. right, well, welcome to you. Thank you. Um, I have your book right here. I was able to read um, some of the forwarding on it, and I learned a little bit about you and um, and your background and, and just what has inspired you and given your, you your passion. Um, so we can talk about that a little bit, but box crushers, I'm sure everyone's thinking, what is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, our tagline is that we don't just think outside the box. We climb out, crush it, and never look back. <laughs> okay. Yes, so what I recognize through my career of speaking is that there's four basic types of fear, levels of fear that people adapt to their condition to have. Sure. And so we first pinpoint which box type they are. So there's peeper, flipper, inspector, and warrior. And so once we can pinpoint which one they are, then we can start to overcome that fear and some other obstacles they have. You know, it's funny, mm -hmm. my son, um, I have two boys who are in college right now and they took kind of like a personality um, profile mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what they are good at and what their strengths are. And I looked at my husband and I said, how, if, how do you even know what you're good at without someone else telling you? And I'm thinking, oh, now there's a clue <laughs> about my personality. But do you find that, though, that, that there are, are individuals out there that don't even know themselves? They do, and that is what the 5D transformation system is, because once I was able to pinpoint these security levels, and I, when I first was creating my programs and my content and researching and doing all of this, I went to personality types, thinking it's personality types. But it's not. It's, okay. It's fear in itself. You know, there's. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. So it goes beyond the personality types. But once I said, okay, well, here's what box type you are, I couldn't stop there. It was how do I get you to become that warrior to have no box, and so that's where I created the 5D transformation system. And when I say I created, I. I say that lightly because it is definitely God's work. I don't think I'm smart enough to do it on my own. He really enlightened me to some amazing things. And so the 5D transformation system, the very first thing we do is determine who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, you're, you're stuck right off the bat. Right. You've got to know who you are. And it's funny also you bring up the personality types because I actually teach almost, I don't want to say against it, mm -hmm. but I enlighten to a new way because too often we take that test and we go, well, that's who I am. Right. But as I was creating that content and I was saying, you know, determine who you are, I was putting that content into my program. And I spent three days on it and God said, no, 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 that's not my work. And mm -hmm. so I learned to step back and really let him take the wheel on that because God or Jesus, he's, he wasn't one personality type. And if we say, well, that's just who I am, then we stop and we accept that. Yeah. And Jesus, he's centered in all of them. He's the best of all of them. And so that's also why it's true. It's also why it's not discover who you are, it's determine. Choose to be the best of all of them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I do, I, I, yeah. the fear part of this resonates with me because I think we so operate, so often operate out of our fears. We do. So, yeah. um, how did you get started? You know, reading your, um, again, about your family, I, I was struck by your, your father, too, paying you to read books. He did. Um, he which did. I think is a fabulous idea because yeah. children, especially today, mm -hmm. are not interested in reading, but it can open the world to them. Mm -hmm. And um, so how did you get started? It was that. It was the best thing that my dad could have done for me. And to be honest, I hated it. Oh, I'm sure I, you did. I mean, 12 years old, you're handed an adult book that's talking about business and life and God. Mm -hmm. And the words they're used, you don't understand them. And there were so many times in one chapter, I was running off to dad. What does this mean? <laughs> and I have an attitude, you know. Yeah. And I, I just, I didn't like it, but I wanted the money. And so after I would read it, I would have to write him a paper. Well, even oh, you did. I, yeah, I I had, oh, oh, he wow. had to know that I was learning something. Sure. But that was hard. So I had to write as I read, like take the highlights. Yes. And so then I had this binder of all my notes and everything. 
but after maybe a year or so of this, it became a way of life for me. Yeah. And I made the mistake of admitting to my dad that I enjoyed it, and so he no longer paid me. Oh. And 20 years later, I'm still reading and taking notes. <laughs> so, But you became yes. a great writer, though. I did. You I, know. That's what they tell me. Yes, <laughs> and you've written a book now that hopefully yeah. will become a little profitable for you. Yes. So yes. Um, that's excellent. And would you say that you, all, you have always known yourself? No. Okay. No, I spent so many years. I'm actually writing my testimonial book right now. Okay. And I've actually shut my past out a lot because I, because of the way I was raised, I was more, I, I don't want this to come across wrong, but I was more intelligent than my peers. I knew oh. more. I knew too much. Mm -hmm. And there were actually times that I would scream at God and cry, like, why can't I just be stupid? Because it was really hard to relate. I couldn't relate to anybody my age. And I wanted to fit in, especially at that age. So I was so confused for so many years. But you put me in a room with adults at that age, yeah. they loved me. And they would tell me, you're wiser beyond your years. Yes. And I still get that. You know, people say, well, you're a life coach and you're a business coach, but you're only 32. Well, I started at 12. Yeah, really. So I, I, I really had a rough time. And so... Well, I'll tell you what, Elena, I could talk to you for a long <laughs> time yet, but we are unfortunately out of time. If anyone is interested, you are a life coach, a licensed life coach. Um, is there a number that they can reach you, and what age do you need to be? Any age. My youngest client is 11, and my oldest is in her 60s, and I do coach some men. I know some men are more hesitant to admit that they need help or come and ask for it, but mm -hmm. I do have some men that I coach. And my phone number for them to reach me is 419-302-8630. Okay, and they can also email you, and do you have a website? Yes, my website is elenarerig.com. Okay, that yeah. seems to be the thing now anyway. Yes, so, yes. all right, very good. Elena, it was a pleasure meeting you, and, yep. and good luck to you in your Thank future. You. Thank right. you. Thank you.